Flight boss, bitch. You know, for sure. You know, listen to the mind of an Antares Moon. I am the Royal Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And this video right here is going to be about what is the mark of the beast, actually. Now, I probably got a video about this already, but for the most part, I want to go more into depth so people can understand what actually, what is the mark of the beast, actually. Now, here's the thing. Let's break down these terms. The mark. The mark isn't necessarily pertaining to an actual mark, a physical mark. See, when, when we start to look in the Bible and things of that nature, we're talking about virtues and principles, and we're making allegories off of these virtues and principles. You see what I'm saying? And then this gets into concepts of Jewish mysticism, anthropomorphizing, a disembodied brain, and all kind of goddamn dumbass shit. But for the most part, you need to know this is coming from mankind. But it's us coming up with allegories and things of that nature on virtues and principles. For an example, Adam. Adam is a specific masculine thought. Eve is a specific feminine emotion and things of that nature. But there's endless stars out here. There's endless thoughts and feelings. There's endless concepts of Adams and Eves to come together and create concepts within you where you go to internal war within yourself where you're trying to please your spirit now based upon Cain and Abel. Cain is a specific virtue and principle. Abel is a specific virtue and principle that have got manifested from the joining of a thought, a Adam, a specific Adam thought and a specific Eve thought, aka these, the allegories is letting you know how thoughts is playing out. Thoughts and feelings is playing out. Masculine and femininity is playing out. And we're giving these things terminologies and shit. So check this out, right? Now that you understand that, when you hear about the mark of the beast, you know, the beast of the field is us developing our lower animalistic natures and the rep in the allegory in the Bible, aka Christian myth uh, mythology or aka Masonic astrology, is basically telling us right the beast is correlated to our lower animalistic natures and the spirit a lot of time the spirit your God created your lower animalistic natures aka the beast of your land aka when you concentrate your land and you concentrate on the external world and everything that you try to accumulate in there, the beast, your desires on that land. You see what I'm saying? So when we get into circumstances of talking about the mark of the beast, the mark is talking about a, a point of time. It's referring to time, you know, like on your mark, get set, go. And on your mark is pointing to the time that you're getting ready to go and start the race or whatever like that. So the mark is representing a time frame. I know my tongue is blue. I was eating some motherfucking warhead popsicles. You better believe it. So the mark is representing a time frame, not an actual mark on your actual body. And these, we're naming pieces of our body, these things in the Bible, not the other way around. Like people already understood what man and woman, uh, what man and woman was. The first concept of man and woman was thoughts and feelings, not male and female. You see what I'm saying? That's why men and women indulge, I mean, um, in de-evolve into uh, male or female. That's another video. But like I said, you have to understand the allegory, understand the mysticism between it. So when it's saying the mark, it's saying the time reference. So even if the story is actually saying the mark on, on your hand or the mark on the forehead or something like that, right? These are different terms for virtues and principles. Your forehead in the Bible don't mean your forehead as dumbass Jews calling these your body parts. You see what I'm saying? Always keep that in mind. That's why you would never. And when you hear about the description of certain people in the Bible, oh, this person was red or this person. They're talking about stars or thought forms, a passionate thought form. If it's correlated to red, but let's not get too far into that. Now, like I said, right, getting into the circumstance of the mark, the mark represents a time reference. And it's the time reference where it's the mark, the time replace mark with time of the beast and replace beast with your lower animalistic natures and if you don't like that term because it's too gnostic for you then replace your lower animalistic natures with your desires of the external world so the mark of the beast is the time of the desires the time that spirit spirits got lost into humanity aka that's a different term for it when spirits got lost into humanity that spirits lowering themselves and that's a spirit getting lost into desires in some way, shape, or form. So that what so when we mark that time, that was the mark of the beast. The time spirits got lost in their animalistic natures. The time spirits got lost in their desires. Or if you too, if you're looking at the Bible like a history book, the time mankind got lost in their desires. You know what I'm saying? So that's the mark of the beast. So this is something that's happening every day, just like Revelation. 
just like Genesis is. The spark of an idea, let there be light. And just like Revelations, the destruction of that light so you can reproduce another one after the fact and let go of that beast. Let go of that snake. Let go of that dragon. You see what I'm saying? So this is the, this is real apologetics. This is real being a real theologian. And they don't even know what they be talking about. So here's, here's what you need to understand the mark of the beast and why this happens every day. When you got things out here like Masons and Catholicism and shit like that, they understand based upon Jewish magis, Jewish rabbis, a.k.a. being a motherfucking, um, uh, being a Jew at that time was a person who just had knowledge of the unknown and the unknown was referred to the mind. So they started to come up with terminologies that the mind could be the devil based upon what the mind was leading humanity uh, to do during that particular time. And you have people with certain uh, knowledge, a.k.a. Jewish mysticism, a.k.a. Um, having knowledge of the unknown mysticism, unknown Jews is just another word for what they was calling philosophers back then. And then for the most part, you are able to uh, come up with concepts and rules on how to correlate your mind. And then this takes us into like chakra work or their, or the Jewish mysticism version of it. Jesus and Allah and Jehovah and all these, all these is just different terms for different travels that you're going through as a spirit and different light you could get lost into going, going throughout those virtues and principles. So when we start to talk about the mark of the beast, right? This happens every day. Now, when you got Catholicism and all these motherfuckers knowing this was going on, this is how they create equilibriums within the world, right? AKA, if they know the sheep don't know how to handle their own desires and stuff like that, keep people keep having kids out of wedlock, and they don't have to do nothing but present something little on their program, television channels, and things of that nature. And everybody get lost into that desire and shit like that, right? This is how they know that they're in a world amongst of sheep and who deserve their resources that they control or not. And then for the most part, here's the thing, right? They create a market of beasts every other day. Anytime the shadow government create a new, something new out here, a new app, a new car, a new, something that's new that you think you need for your life, the moment that you go out and work for it. The moment that you go out and, and slave and blood, sweat, and tears for it, you know what I'm saying? The moment you go out and stress yourself out to go get these things, that's the moment that you have been hit with the mark of the beast, a.k.a. when they start something, a new phone or whatever like that, that's the mark, that's the start. And since you desire it, it becomes a beast. Now, the level of the extent that you go through to actually obtain these things allow the shadow government to know how much of a sheep you actually are, how much of a robot you actually are. You know what I'm saying? How much non-power you actually have in some way, shape, or form. And this is who they utilize as blood cells to drink y'all and continuously have y'all magic squares to have they motherfucker computerized mental system to continue running as a software. You see what I'm saying? So keep that in mind also. So these allegories in the Bible are being utilized as rituals and spells to practice on humanity every day because it's part of the human psyche, because it's written on all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our kneecaps, all of our thighs, all of our nutsacks, all of our pussies and shit like that. So you need to understand that, too. So if you have a group of individuals that's sitting back and this is their science. You got mystical science and then you got realistic science. So you got science about the external world. Then you have a science about the internal world, Jewish mysticism, religion and all this motherfucking shit. And then when you got people who want to control that aspect, this when things become from operative, writing it down to speculative. You know what I'm saying? Um, A.K.A. speculating. And the, the person who got the best speculations is the world uh, worship that person's thought form. And that thought form becomes a disembodied mind that people start to anthropomorphize. And depending on how, how long that thought form is in rulership, where people agree and believe in it in some way, shape, or form, then this is what people are calling God. But people are calling men's visions, men's and women's thought forms and visions and philosophical points of views of looking at the world, spirituality, and, and, and that kind of shit God. People are calling other men's thought forms God, other female's thought forms God. And some of these thought forms been in rulerships for a long time, like this Jesus Christ one, where Jesus is just another terminology for your solar plexus. Same way as Raw, same way as Helios, same way as Apollo. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it, same way when somebody just want to say you want to center yourself. It's all the same same shit that we all pointing to, just different terms, different language, different linguistics, and different ways of understanding the same fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? So keep that in mind also. So, you know, once we start to talk about motherfucking uh, the mark of the beast, this is something that goes on every other fucking day. Anytime the shadow government and Catholicism and the Masons and Jewish mysticism decide to present some new technology or some hardware that you guys are willing to go out and slave for. And that'd be the mark of that 
that beast. So we have a whole bunch of marks of a whole bunch of different beasts, aka a whole bunch of times something was presented to y'all, and y'all get y'all got lost in y'all lower animalistic natures and was willing to die, cry, or steal or kill for it. You know what I'm saying? So you got to keep this in motherfucking mind. They know how to use these allegories in the Bible as rituals and spells over mankind. And then once they took y'all from a speculative point of view, right? This is how a person could take over your spiritual natures and stuff like that. When a person come up with a, a good science about the internal realm, right? Here's where you get different religions. And when you got a person who come up with a good science about the external realm, this is where you come up with a bunch of ph philosophical points of views and, and science hypothesis and theories and things of that nature. But you need to know these are in the same pocket you know what i'm saying they're in the same motherfucking pocket and if you're not understanding just what men and women as humans the experiences and the space that they are in to even come up with these ideas and conclusions in the first place you'll be lost in the sauce so when you hear me say shit like the bible anytime you see man woman um that means thought and feeling you know what i'm saying or an external and feminine and then for the most part you have many different thoughts throughout the bible many different feelings throughout the bible moses was a, a thought that be a feeling that became a thought still in its emotional uh loneliness in some way shape or form where it was feeling incapable of and not understanding itself so that's an allegory story of you having to understand yourself so when Moses went in with, went to go as an allegory, when Moses went to go tell the people who uh, and Moses asked God, who would I told them bring me? And God said, I am right. Here's what religious and fake theologians and apologetics and all preachers are 21st century demons. Right. Here's where they get lost because they think it's a history book. They Jewish mysticism made them believe that they're talking outside of themselves. So they take that mind state and put it in Moses mind state. And then think Moses was an actual person. So they think now they lost, double lost. They think Moses has some charismatic gifts where Moses was talking to something outside of itself. And then when Moses asked this thing, uh, asked, asked this, what, what, who should I say who sent me? They going to come up with arguments actually saying that, oh, God's name is I am. And this was God saying I am or whatever like that. Not knowing that you dumb as fuck. And I'm Archangel Uriel. You hearing it from the horse's mouth. This is an allegory to when you're talking to yourself because you can't prove to me Moses was talking outside of himself no more than you could prove to me you ain't talking to yourself. So I don't care if you really believe you ain't talking to yourself or not. You can't never prove you're not talking to yourself because it's still got to come out of your motherfucking mouth. So when Moses was talking to its spirit, its own spirit, it's God and it was like, it's God because when you speaking for your God, that's your God. You see what I'm saying? And that's your spirit. Another word for spirit. And it's saying, what should I tell them? The spirits say, tell them I am who I am. So if Moses in the flesh, same way Jesus in the flesh already know it's Moses, then Moses went to go tell them, I'm, I sent me. Not for you to be a dumbass, a, in a, a, a dumbass theologian to be like, Moses went to go tell them God's name, something else. No, the allegory is Moses told himself, I sent my, I am. So I am, I am. And who was the name of I am? In that situation, it was Moses. So don't get motherfucking lost in this motherfucker. Otherwise, you about to come up with some logic or some la-la land 2,000-year-old argument and shit like that. Because the moment you try to, any time a, a Protestant try to justify their lostness, that's that's a, a person that's a demon. That's a person that's in la-la land. That's a person that's that want to agree to being confused. Oh, shit. Should have had a bird in here for a second. That's a person who agree to being, uh, being confused. And his motherfucker. That's a person who agree to uh, uh, not knowing and wanting to be satisfied with not knowing in some way, shape or form. So you need to know the mark of the beast. Don't let these Jewish mysticism rock y'all to sleep every day. Creating new marks of the beast while you somewhere having old 2000 year old arguments thinking that it got something to do with 2000 years ago. And we just now get ready to experience one now because something happened and fucked up in your life that you don't want. You lost in the sauce. You lost in the motherfucking sauce. You see what I'm saying? So keep that in motherfucking mind. Ain't nothing in the Bible that these preachers or whatever like that, none of them see it the right way. They don't even know how to look at life no other way but Jewish mysticism. So they are they automatically demons. They go into hell. They're lost in somebody else's light. They're lost in somebody else's thought, right? And then they always have to go back to these books or these analogies in order to understand what's in front of them. So they externalize their whole life. Their spirit is totally wrapped into the external world. They're coming back here. They're going to hell. You need to detach from that. ASAP.
You know what I'm saying? And when you do look into these books, understand the spiritual natures out of it and don't get lost by a spirit that created their concept of this shit. You see what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. When you look into these things, you're supposed to see something that all of us can understand as a spirit. Not look into these things and get lost into knowledge and have to find and figure out more and have dumbass arguments and de debates about things you do not know. You know what I'm saying? So keep that in mind also. And who told you you do not know? So the only reason you're in a situation of not knowing something is because you didn't got lost in some way, shape, or form. You know what I'm saying? You have the wrong interpretation. Wrong interpretation. Every preacher that ever existed got the wrong interpretation. Let me repeat. Every preacher that ever existed got the wrong interpretation because that was done on purpose. It was done on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no such thing as you having the right word or something like that. And then you already lost into language and shit like that. You don't, you don't, you didn't even create no language. The fuck is you even talking about? You know what I'm saying? So that's besides the motherfucking fact. But other than that, that's the motherfucking mark of the beast. Mark of the beast. The time humanity got lost in an animalistic nature. And that happened every other motherfucking day. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the news channel up here talking about all the bad shit that happened every fucking day. You know what I'm saying? So that's the motherfucking mark of the beast in this motherfucker. And in, in the Bible, it's talking about men and women as light forms, a.k.a. virtues and principles. You got red ones, you got yellow ones, you got ones that got light, that manifest into sheep. You got you got shit that can manifest and condense into gems and crystals and shit like that. The crystals you got, you got shit that can manifest into trial and tribulation and, and, and Job type thought forms and feelings and emotions. All of these are ver to the point that when you wrestling with God, that's you wrestling with your spirit. You know what I'm saying? You're wrestling with your spirit because you didn't got so lost with your lower animalistic natures and you have became the flesh. You have became the snake on the tree. You have became the Satan. You desire to go to heaven. You desire to think that there's a such thing as hell as far as that concept of it and shit like that to the point that this is what you're creating and you're, you're getting help based upon whatever demon you was following so y'all all can go there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going there with y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to somewhere else that y'all don't know about. They ain't got nothing to do with Jewish mysticism. Flight boss, bitch, you know. For sure. You better motherfucker believe it. God damn it.